Okay, let's pick it off, pick it up where we left off, but right here. And um, well, what I had said before break was just to go through the exercise of uh, the routes for the sympathetic pathways and just list all the anatomical structures that the cell has, <coughs> starting with the preganglionic cell. It starts in the lateral horn of gray matter. So I'll just write lateral horn. The cell body is in the lateral horn. It's the axon that leaves through the ventral root. After the ventral root, the ventral root merges with the dorsal root to form spinal nerve. The spinal nerve is a very short nerve that divides into a dorsal or ventral ramus. You could go through either one, depending on what your target is. This one, they go through the ventral ramus of the spinal nerve. Now, to get into the sympathetic chain, the paravertebral ganglion, you use the white rami communicons. Let's just call it white radius. The full name is white radius communicons. That communicates with the chain. Now you're in the paravertebral ganglion and you synapse at the same level. Paravertebral. Ganglion. Synapse. At this level, the same level you're in. You don't go up or down, you synapse at that level. And then from then on, it's the postganglionic cell. I'll just put post here. Now I'm talking about the postganglionic cell. The cell body is in the paravertebral ganglion, but the axon will lead through the gray ramus and then enter through, in this example, the ventral radius to get out. <coughs> Gray ramus. Ventral ramus. And we'll go whatever the target is to the target. So that's just a list of the terms and um, be able to follow both cells through all those structures. And that was one example. Any questions on uh, what I just did where we're synapsing at the same level? It says it right here. <coughs> The other example, <coughs> synapse at a higher or lower level. I don't want to rewrite all the first structures, they're all the same. The pre ganglionic cell is right here, lateral horn. Exits through the ventral root, spinal nerve, goes to the ventral ramus, white ramus. You're in the paravertebral ganglion. You 
don't synapse. You, in this example, it, you ascend to a higher level. <clears throat> when you get to the higher level, you then synapse in that paravertebral ganglion. Ganglionic, it leaves through the gray ramus, ventral ramus. All right, gray ramus. Ventral ramus. So everything was the same until you entered the chain and you just went up the chain instead of synapsing at the same level. The third example I presented before the break was to go through the chain and then synapse at a, at a pre vertebral ganglion. <clears throat> I'll raise everything up to here. Everything's the same. You start in the lateral horn, uh, ventral root, spinal nerve, the ventral ramus, white ramus. You get to the paravertebral ganglia. You enter, but you go through. You don't synapse, go through. So that pre-ganglionic cell, its axon is now in what we call the splanchnic nerve. So you use the splanchnic nerve. To get to the pre-vertebral ganglion. This is why they call it pre-vertebral. Pre means before or in front of. They're in front of the vertebral column. <clears throat> really, they're actually located on the abdominal aorta, which is right in front of the vertebral column, although they don't show the abdominal aorta here. OK, well, anyways, that's where you synapse in this example. So from this point on, then it's the postganglionic cell goes to the target. That was the third example. They don't show the fourth example, which is to go to the adrenal medulla. And so I got a figure from another book uh, right here. It would be all the same structures up to this point. The preganglionic cell, lateral horn, ventral root, spinal nerve, ventral ramus, white ramus. You go through this ganglion. You use the splanking nerve to get to the prevertebral, and you go through again. You never synapse. You go straight to the target, which is adrenal medulla. Here are, um, well, the first three examples are shown in one shot in this figure here. <clears throat> I want to do some half sheet questions with the next slides. We'll pass them out.
you'll spend some time looking at this figure when you uh, study for your test. It's the same organization as we've been talking about. Come on your half sheet. These aren't numbered, but let's call this number one. And see the big black arrow? On your half sheet, go ahead and identify what you think that's pointing to. Half sheet. Five, three, number one. Pick the right term. And this isn't a quiz. You can kind of quietly discuss with your neighbor as you learn this. I'll give you a few seconds and we'll move on. There's number one. Identify that. Those are the choices. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know where. Oh, okay. But it looked like, I didn't, like the numbers were going to A, B, or C. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm pointing to this structure here. And uh, to answer the question correctly, choose from this. <laughs> Put that for number one. For number two, I'll advance the slide. Now I want you to identify this ganglion uh, from these choices. going to be 11 of them. I want to go back and review them. Moving on, number three. Identify. You know, let's look for that black arrow. choice there. So that was number three, right? Yeah. Here's number four. Five. Number five is pointing to this structure right there. Mm. And as we're studying these, Notice the cells are different colors, mm -hmm. and they use solid lines, and they use dotted lines. Are the solid lines pre or post? The solid lines are pre. The dotted lines are post. So let that be a clue to what this is. 
it's got pre-ganglionic fibers in it. Point number six. Six is pointing to this structure as post-ganglionic fiber in it. Point number seven. This structure, which I had you identify earlier, what kind of fibers is it carrying? Pre or post? This is number seven. Moving on to number eight. This structure, which we had you identify earlier, is it carrying pre or post ganglionic fibers? This structure is carrying pre or post. Number nine. <clears throat> the next two are true false. Put this for number ten. The prevertebral ganglion is also known as the collateral ganglion. True or false? And lastly, number 11. The paravertebral ganglion form a sympathetic chain of ganglion. That's for number 11. All right, let's go over the answers here. Well, number one, identify. What do you think? Para vertebral ganglion. Yeah, very good. Two. Identify pre vertebral. Three spiknic nerve choice A. Four. What you put for that? C ventral root. Five. White Raymond. Let's get that. Choice B. Carrying preganglionic fibers.
Number six, pointing to the other one, not the white one, but the gray ramus, choice E. On number seven, this structure is carrying, fill in the blank, preganglionic fibers. Preganglionic fibers, choice A. So if you're not seeing that, follow the purple line from inside the spinal cord. Purple line, solid is pre. It's still purple, solid line, solid, solid all the way. It's preganglionic. It doesn't synapse until it gets to the prevertebral ganglion. Number eight, this structure is carrying <coughs> preganglionic fibers, choice A. Or number nine, this structure is carries dotted lines, post. Choice B, 10, true, false. That's a true statement. I kind of mentioned that in, you know, just as a side note, but you have to know that term. True. Not also true. Okay. You know, the other thing um, I want to show you is how this is a more anatomically correct picture. Um, the diagrams are accurate, but um, they don't show the vertebral column, how it kind of uh, contains everything. So you can see the sympathetic chain ganglion. You can see why they're called paravertebral, because they're on either side. You can see the nerve roots in there. There's a spinal cord. Okay, one thing um, we want to do is we want to look at a lot, a lot of these structures that we listed. And um, you have to know the motor and sensory um, contents. If it carries visceral motor, if it carries somatic motor, if it carries visceral sensory, if it carries somatic sensory. So it helps to table it out. Let me uh, show you what I mean. Oh, before I move on, here are all the possible kinds of fibers that a nerve can carry. The visceral sensory, somatic sensory. Um, I cross out visceral motor parasympathetic because this is within the thoracal dorsal region, uh, region, so it's sympathetic. But all the motor possibilities are it could be somatic motor or visceral motor. However, there's pre and post. So those are all the kinds of nerve fibers you should be able to identify in a figure like this. So let me list all the structures that we talked about. Ventral root, dorsal root, spinal nerve, dorsal ramus, ventral ramus, White ramus, gray ramus, as well as, um, well, they have a structure here called the sympathetic nerve. It could be a spiky nerve, but we'll just stick with what they say uh, sympathetic. So I'll, I'll use uh, red and blue for motor and sensory. However, um, there's somatic motor, SM, but there's also visceral motor, VM. 
And there's also visceral motor, there's a preganglionic cell and a postganglionic cell. Pre, post, visceral motor. And then there's somatic sensory and visceral sensory. So SS or VX. So somatic motor basically, but in different kinds. And so um, but that's everything that they're, they're showing you here. So let me uh, take this out. So what I'm going to do, and this will kind of help you organize the information, is go through each structure and look what's contained in it and just check the box. This is only showing you motor pathways, so we're just going to stay in the red zone here. And, uh, well, ventral root, right here. Looks like it's got, the colors are a little different, but this light blue represents um, visceral motor preganglionic, and this is somatic motor. So it has both of those motor fibers. There's this one and that one. Okay, that, that's all it contains. Both motors, but preganglionic. Okay, dorsal root? There's nothing in there. Because remember, dorsal is for what? Sensory coming in. This is just the motor pathways. Spinal nerve. Now, the spinal nerve is right here. And it has both. What's well, the same thing? There and right there. And then it divides into dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. And it looks like both carry somatic motor and visceral motor postganglionic. So somatic motor, somatic motor, visceral motor, visceral motor, but postganglionic. Well, if you follow the pre, the synapse is here in the paravertebral, and then the black one sends it out, sends it out here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, then you have white and gray ramus. The white ramus right here, you draw it on the inside, it's got that blue fiber in it. It just has visceral motor preganglionic, the white one. Whoops, this is pretty sorry. Okay, there you go. And then so the gray ramus just has visceral motor postganglionic. The sympathetic nerve has visceral motor postganglionic. So that's it. It varies, but that's what it is. Okay, that, that's everything for the motor pathway. The next slide is for the sensory pathways. You can go through the same exercise. Uh, the ventral root, it's got nothing. But the dorsal root has both kinds, somatic and visceral sensory. Got nothing, got nothing. The spinal nerve has both kinds of sensory fibers, somatic and visceral. Dorsal and ventral ramus, they both have both kinds of sensory, somatic and visceral. White ramus and gray ramus, well, looks like only the white ramus 
has the sensory, uh, the gray ramus does not. They're not labeled on this slide. Let me go back to the previous slide. See, white's on the inside, gray's on the outside. So, uh, yeah, the white. And it's only visceral sensory, not somatic sensory. The somatic nervous system does not use the rami communicantes. Okay, gray rami's got nothing. Sympathetic nerve does have the visceral sensory uh, fibers. So um, on half sheet number 12, choose all that apply. Of those choices, choose all of them that are contained in ventral root. You just took notes on it. It should be pretty easy. It's right there. Well, with the information in front of you of those choices, how many did you choose? Two. 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 And which ones? Well, certainly these two. And the choices are? Yeah, B and E would be correct. Uh, do the same for this. The ventral rami. Ventral ramus. This one here. Call number 13. Ventral ramus. I'm not going to tell you what the right answer is, but how many are you going to choose? Four. 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 Choose the right four. Provincial radius, and we'll move on. Last one, uh, number 14, white ramus.
How many are you going to choose? Two. Two. Right, which one? You just look at the choices there. Okay. That ends those slides. Um, we're at the end of this week. Let's talk about next week and the next week. We're pretty much at the end of the course here. There's a lot to cover.